Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is a model kit of an O'Neill cylinder type space settlement by the Wave Corporation. Now this is um quite a small scale model as you can see by the size of the box. It doesn't actually have an official scale, but um just keep in mind that these type of space settlements are absolutely huge. You've got um indications of cities and landscape on the inside of this um, rotating cylinder. So just having a quick look around the box. So it's a kit from Japan, so it's all in Japanese. Uh, so a couple of nice photos there. And it also includes a little booklet, which includes all of the design sketches for this particular model. Although this concept was first thought up in the uh, 1970s by uh, Gerard O'Neill, I believe, in uh, one of his books about uh, the future of space colonization. So it's quite an old design. Uh, Probably made most famous by the Babylon 5 space station, which used a similar concept. And uh, yeah, so um, let's have a look inside the box. Alright, so inside we've got uh, a few bags of sprues. They're including the basin stand. All parts of the cylinder, the sides and one of the end caps. Three bags of identical clear sprues for the uh, transparent sections of the cylinder. And then we've got the instruction sheet booklet. So, looks like a pretty simple construction. Shouldn't take too long to build up. Most of it's just going to be painting, I think. Yeah, so some of the extras. We've got some lovely stickers for... Um, they are reflective panels that extend out from the cylinder to reflect the sun back in, inside the habitat. There with a, just a, bit, a little bit of um, stenciling detail, so that's quite nice. And some really nice landscape stickers for the inside of the cylinder. So here you can see indications of our cities and landscape and some lakes. And these are some little strip stickers for the dividers of the clear sections. A little brass rod. I assume this is where the uh, station connects to the stand. And then the design booklet showing all of the sketches for the design of the settlement. It's a really nice addition. Yeah, so, yeah, quite a nice little collection of extras in the box. So, it should be quite a fun little project. So, let's get started. Now to start off with I'm going to remove all of the parts just at once so I can get them ready for uh, cleaning up and then priming. And to make things a little bit easier in the painting process, I'm going to start some sub-assemblies by just uh, putting together a few parts uh, before painting. So for example, the, uh, the outer ring you can just start building up. And it turns out the kit is all seems to be all pushed together, so you don't actually need any glue, which is quite nice. There seem to be a lot more kits coming out these days that don't require glue. I guess technology and the um, the design phase and the moulding has uh, come a long way in uh, designing how to put these together without any adhesive. So there's three sections of the ring there and then just push together the outer bit. Actually, it turns out it's not completely pushed together. These two tiny little bits here just attach like that, so it's 
just going to need a little dab of glue right there. Now to start the painting process I'm going to prime all of the parts using Vallejo Surface Primer Grey. And now for the main base coat, I'm using Vallejo Model Air Russian AF Grey. So for the clear sections, there's a uh, frame along the edge that needs painting to match the rest of the uh, superstructure. So I'll just uh, mask off the central bit and then um, spray on the edge frame. And now that the base coat's dried, I'm going to seal it in with a coat of Tamiya's TS13 Gloss Clear. And now with the gloss coat down, I'm going to start doing some detail painting and using uh, the um, the artwork is inspiration. See here there's a few sort of coloured markings and a little number two there. So I thought about adding those by pulling out some of my old spare decals in this particular case from an old tank kit which has got some nice small markings on it which I'll use just to dot around the exterior. Now just painting in a few details with some white. I kind of imagine these to be gigantic floodlights or reflectors or some sort of beacon. Or maybe there's something completely different, who knows. It's just a, add a bit of colour and detail. So you may have noticed that I've been painting up a third end cap dome piece and the kit just had a spare one so I thought I'd paint it up and then experiment with different uh, washes, different um, techniques of painting the panels just to see what I liked and what I didn't like and actually <laughs> I'm not really happy with any of the washes I've tried, any of the panelling and the issue just basically comes down to is that Anything I try to do with this detail just kind of really scales down the model. It just makes it look really small. 
I mean, this looks like something off a Starfighter or even a bit of R2-D2 with my experimental blue panels there. And this is an issue I've had with various um, really huge scale ships that I've built. They're adding a wash, just really kind of shrinks the whole thing visually. And I think the moulding detail on these pieces is probably a little bit too big anyway. Because if you imagine inside here, you're going to have like cities and lakes and things like that. So some of these uh, panels and some of the surface detail, this piping, you know, it's going to be like city blocks huge. It's probably not that realistic really to have detail this pronounced. I'd almost expect the exterior, the exterior to be almost smooth at this scale. So short of sanding everything back, I think I'm just going to leave it without a wash and just let the light bring out the detail because any type of wash that I apply I'm just not going to be happy with. So yeah, uh, feel free to disagree but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go forward and not apply a wash. I mean it does risk looking a bit plain and a bit lacking in detail but that's fine. This thing is supposed to be huge, colossal, the me grand mega structure and I uh, want it to look that way. So yeah. So now what I'm going to do is flat coat all of these pieces now that I'm not going to do any more painting and then we can start on the interior detail. And for the flat coat I'm going to use Mission Models Flat Clear. And now with the flat coat down, I've decided to just add another little addition, and that's going to be a fine mist of Vallejo White Grey. I'm going to thin this down and spray over the entire model, just to lighten up the grey a little bit, and also it'll add to the um, uh, the flatness of the final finish. And it's just to uh, give the, uh, the model hopefully a little bit of, more of a texture, variation in the colour, and hopefully create a little bit of depth beyond uh, giving it a wash and panelling and all that sort of stuff, which I decided not to do. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so now it's time to start applying these stickers. I'm gonna start with these huge reflective panels. I guess the trick is going to be lining these up correctly because I don't think I'm going to have much room for error. Let's apply this end first. Right, that's one. Yeah, the trouble with these stickers is that once they go down, they really do not want to come back off again. Not without kind of stretching and warping the sticker. 
so you've kind of got one chance to line it up really it's a little bit stressful yeah so this one was just a t millimeter or two too far back that's fine Just not quite got the edge there. But I might try and cover that up with a bit of silver paint. But at least it's gone down nice and flat. And uh, yeah, look how... Uh, I mean, they look like stickers, but still, it's pretty cool to have that detail. So, coming back to the landscape stickers. And they're quite nicely detailed, and I'm glad they've included them. But I think I'm going to attempt this myself because it would be quite nice to try and make it a little bit more 3D. Even though at this scale it would be, would be quite flat. But I'm going to try and use the Citadel Texture Paint. Technical Astro Granite. So that'll just create a, just a slight kind of 3D um, surface texture. Which I'll paint along the inner surface of these panels. And I won't keep it this colour, I'll just uh, layer some paints over the top to bring out some colour, indicate a few cities and a few lakes, and hopefully it'll give it a bit more of a 3D realistic texture than just uh, using the stickers. So, let's see how it goes. So it's quite a thick, coarse, granular paint. I'm just going to slap it on. And I'll leave a few areas for the lakes. So now moving on to these uh, end cap dome pieces, which I think are quite interesting construction. So I think what they've done is tried to mimic rising mountains at the end of the uh, the spinning cylinder as the centrifugal force sticks people to the rim around there. So you'd have kind of like an artificial rise in the landscape. And I kind of imagine this is where all of the um, administration or the governing bodies or the rich and famous would set up all of their buildings and houses on these little artificial mountains looking down over the populace below. And it's just fun to imagine these little scenarios. So I'm going to paint up the uh, same textured landscape in here and then try and paint them like sort of mountainous landscape from inside.
Now to start painting the landscape, we've just got a mix of various Vallejo model colour paints. So I've got some buff, some German camo bright green, a bit of bronze green, some white, some greyish blue, and the Citadel base coloured or sky for the water. So I'm going to start with the dark green and just layer it over the landscape. Now just adding a bit of the bright green with a bit of white. And now for a bit of the buff colour, which I'm going to just mainly dry brush on. Just to lighten up some of these patches a little bit. And now applying some of the blue to create the lakes. Now just adding a little bit of white 
where the water meets the land. And right inside the end domes, I've decided that this structure in the middle here sprays out an artificial snow to fall on these uh, artificial mountains, just to create a bit of atmosphere. Maybe you could even take yourself up there and go skiing, although the gravity towards the centre would be quite low, so it would be quite an interesting experience. The further down the mountain you ski, the higher the gravity gets. And that's not taking into account the um, Coriolis effect, maybe, as you're coming down. But yeah, yeah, it'd be quite an interesting experiment to run. And to draw out the outline for the towns and cities, I'm just going to use a bit of light grey and just draw some lines, kind of around concentric rings, to match the um, design in the stickers. And on top of those, I'm going to put in some white dots to indicate buildings and lights. Alright, so with all of that done, I'm just going to clean up all of these edges just with a bit of dark grey. And for the dividers on the clay parts, I've just uh, decided to mask them up and spray them instead of using the stickers. Okay, so... Apparently this huge big ring at the front is the agricultural ring where they grow farms and crops and everything that the colony needs to sustain itself. And in each one of these pods, I assume would be like different crops or different plants for each one. Now the kit provides these uh, stickers here which you place uh, once the clear insert's been placed in there. You stick this on the front so it's kind of like... Well, then why did they bother to make it clear if you're just going to cover it up with a sticker? So I think what I'm going to try is painting the inside of the bottom of each pod with like um, green or yellow or something to indicate some sort of crop like wheat or, or um, vegetables or whatever else kind of veg vegetation they would have in there. So just various different colours around each pod. And then I'll see how it looks with the clear insert placed in and if it's worth Keeping like that or just putting the sticker on over the top anyway. So let's see how that goes. Now I'm just going back over with the base coat just to clean up my sloppy paint job. And of course one of these pods needs to be dedicated towards growing chilies. So let's see if I can add a few red spots. I know this isn't very realistic but got to have them in there. Now for one last job before I put it all together, and that's to apply a bit of this micro gloss to all of the uh, water areas, just so they have a nice reflective surface. 